What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be checking out some new arrivals and some uh, some stuff that's coming soon to Blade HQ. I did DLT last week. I haven't done this in a while so there's a lot of stuff to look at uh, on Blade HQ. Metal Complex, why would we watch you do this or listen to your commentary when we can simply go to this page ourselves and do it? without having to listen to you talk. You can, that's a good point. Uh, I'll make it easy on you. I'll link this page and the coming soon page right down in the description so that you can go and take a look for yourself if you'd like to. Thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. It's important to point out that I am filming this on a Thursday. You are watching this if you watched it right when it uploaded on a Saturday morning. So there may be some additional stuff uh, that is not on this page. We have some Magna Cut Hogue Decas, which is awesome. That's definitely something people are going to be interested in. And we also have the Chavez Liberation Street in both Tanto and Drop Point configuration. We're going to look more at that here in a sec. I wanted to highlight those two things, but I want to look at the Coming Soon page. Uh, it's been like a month since I have looked at Blade HQ's Coming Soon page, and uh, I think I want to. Yeah, this this guy right here. The Wii Knife Co. Mini Malice Button Lock Titanium. It's going to be expensive, but it also looks pretty awesome. Uh, that's cool that they did a 7-inch version. Hey, uh, we can you do the full-size one too? That'd be really cool. I'd really like that. But this one, uh, this uh, smaller button lock guy is definitely cool. This is a pre-order, obviously. So I know a lot of people got in on it. There's a bunch of different variants, right? You can see down here we got bronze and blue and black and damascus steel for six hundred dollars. We people know that damascus steel is not an additional three hundred and fifty dollars. Just so you guys know, generally what you pay additionally for damascus steel is about one hundred and fifty bucks. I don't know what they're doing, but no, three no. But the regular ones, these are priced okay. The Thug Two. I don't know what's different about that, but I did ask we to take a look at this, so they're going to send me one. We also have the Native 5 Salt and LC200N. I think that's probably worth pointing out there, right? But it's plastic, but, but that's the idea, right? Well, they could have done it in titanium. Well, that would have cost a lot more than $143. Well, <laughs> the, the other part of my brain that's creating the argument ran out of things. Um, <laughs> to create that argument for the LC200N and FRN will work very well for people who just don't want to deal with, you know, potential corrosion at all, or people who actually work in and around salt water, right? Sorry, we went way down there. There's the black malice, the there's new cogents that are in different materials, right? So those are and, and they're coming back. I know they've been gone for a while. The Cetos, Cetos, I don't know how to pronounce this. This is something that is coming to me and I will be reviewing it soon. 6375 for eight inches, three and a half inch blade of 14C28N. On paper, that looks pretty good. Um, ooh, why did they do a, is this a steel frame lock? I thought it was a liner lock. Um, all right, well, we'll look at that one when it when it comes in. Home front assisted. All right. Why? Why, can, why don't they do this manual? The Wii Shudan is an interesting one there. Three and a half inches. Glad they're doing a more full size stuff. This is very odd to me. Are they all steel frame locks? Yeah. Mm. How do you know it's not titanium? I just know that it's not titanium because it's $63. Uh, it's steel. Oh, the Synergy 2 V2. Looks like they changed the clip point. Now that to me looks much more handsome. Yeah. Oh, it's an integral. What? What? No. Yeah, the original, was the original an in integral? Wait, okay. This is, that's, that's pretty impressive. 370, at first I was like, why do they want 378 bucks for it? But then I saw integral. If you don't know what that means, it means the handle scales are all one piece of titanium. It's not two pieces of titanium screwed together. 
it's milled from a block of titanium, which is a much more expensive and complicated process. It's also a much more risky process. So it's definitely an higher price tag involved with it. But that's an impressive price, right? Generally speaking, you got China, CPM 20 CV, titanium, integral, and you have good fit and finish. You're looking at 425 to 450 bucks, right? 378, that's pretty good. I like how the blade looks uh, more as well. That'll be one to watch for. Um, that's pretty cool. No idea when that's coming. That's the problem with this stuff is no idea. Um, they didn't offer that one to me. I should ask him about it. <laughs> hey, we, why are you holding out on me, man? Why, why? Are you sending me the Cheetos? The Cheetos? And you're not wanting to send me the Synergy <laughs> Integral? They're like, we don't need your help with that. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Sorry, Boker. Oh, look at that. The coming soon on the Tanto Elite, the, the SOCOM Elite Tanto manuals is still, those are still coming soon. Those have been coming soon for a while. Boy, look at those new great looking spider coats. Mm, that's weird. Um, but you know what? Maybe somebody will like them. The mini crossroads that you can, I, I pointed those out at uh, Crane's Cullery. Those are great. Oh, they, uh, they got the uh, River Wolf. That's a John Demko design. They got the River Wolf coming to Blade HQ, so that's worth noting there. Jack Wolf knives. More arc form stuff. Those are kind of expensive. All right, I think we all know about those. Let's see what else. What else you got? Come on. Come on. Let's see now. Ooh. <laughs> this is a SOG with a mirror polish on it. Bang. Bang. Polished CPM S35VN. Oh, oh goodness. Uh, MSRP was 277. What's it gonna be? We don't know, but it's gonna be up there. Um, that's kind of neat that SOG is doing that kind of stuff. I mean, they're definitely they definitely want the knife enthusiast world to notice them, right? Because otherwise they wouldn't be polishing their blades. Altair XR. Interesting. Give this a couple more pages and then we're going to look at some other stuff. Viper Knives Turn Lockback. Okay. Neat. Mm, some more Viper stuff. Not super interested in that. Uh, reverse Tanto in Black is still coming at some point. What else we got? Magna Cut. The Magna Cut Hogue deck has obviously just dropped. Oh, baby. There we go. What the heck is this? I think I saw this. Um, somewhere else. Mm, so come bravo. Is this, this has the new pivot collar. Yeah, Diff a little bit different carbon fiber there. Is this a rendered image? Looks like a rendered image. Hmm, what do we got here? So yes, this is the one that's made by Reich, right? Uh, it says price is coming soon. Yeah, this, this is the Chinese one, right? Yes, it's made by Microtech. Does that make it a real Microtech? I mean, yeah, because Microtech put their logo on it, right? You can define it however you want. This Microtech SoCom Bravo is made in collaboration. Collaboration! <laughs> My pointer. <laughs> My pointer got bigger when I yelled at it. How did I do that? <laughs> uh, collaboration with Reich Knife. So, yes, it is, it is a real, you know, it's a legal Microtech, meaning it is not a clone. Uh, Microtech did that intentionally. Um, let's go back once the internet kicks back in. My gosh, what is going on here? And then this looks like the same thing. It's just the image. The rendered image is darker and it's a drop point. Those are nice knives, right? The quality is definitely there. If you're wondering, I own one. The, the quality is excellent. Dude, get these images up. Come on. I want to see what they look like. I can't, I can't comment on anything that doesn't have an image. These are all, these are getting older. I think. Yeah, okay. Let's go to the new arrivals page. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, the Magna Cut Hogue Deca, um, that's a uh that's a good one. Ooh, no wait, I don't want a DLC one. I wanna see what they're I wanna see if they list what they're heat treating them at. Um let's see. Probably not. They're probably not gonna list it. I'm just curious. No. But you know what? 127 bucks for USA made G10. Nice act. The able lock is great, right? 
Uh, I think the Hogue deck is better than the Bug Out. And you get that sweet, sweet Magna Cut that is, you know, it's good stuff, but it's also like the new thing. So there you go. Native 5 exclusive in M4 is available right now in mint green. I think that looks way better with the DLC blade. So there you go. That's a nice one. Uh, a gigantic axe thing from CRKT. A big orange boy from Benchmade. This from Squid Industries. No idea. Uh, there's the... Um, the mini sheepdog uh, without the flipper and with the thumb hole. That's a cool one. Also like this with the white and black G10. That looks nice. Kaiser Azo P or LP, sorry. More Tactile Knife Co. Rockwall uh, with the, uh, the the thumb stud versions. So that's nice. Skiff bearings uh, with all the different sizes. Those are definitely worth it. Um, if you're wanting to get better action on your knife and you can find a set that fits. Definitely. Very good. Tactile uh, Bayer, I think I'm finally getting that right. Praetorian Swift, Swift FL, what does that mean? Aluminum, S35 and times yellow, yellow anodized aluminum, looks like, looks brown to me. Uh, titanium frame lock. Okay, it's just a frame lock. Sorry, pass on those. Um, nothing, nothing looking very interesting there. I'm so curious about these MechForce M1s. If, if somebody's got one and they'd be willing to loan it to me for review, that would be cool. Hey, these are back, the Esprit. That was uh, one of my favorite knives from 2021. Those are highly recommendable, very cool. And they've got some different uh, versions here. We've got marble carbon fiber with like a kind of a stone, uh, dark stone wash finish. Then we've got black with the marble carbon fiber. That's pretty cool. Quixotic. These are these are all right. I wish they were bigger. The Culex. Um, these are super nice, but I wish this was a button lock. They really should have made the Speedster a button lock. Uh, that would have been really great. Consider doing a Speedster button lock. Uh, Civivi. Mini pry bars, alrighty. No, I know, people. you guys keep asking me to look at case knives. I'm just, they don't do anything for me. And I'm like, you know, yep, it's a traditional and it's got a thing on it. The more I talk, the more people are gonna be like, you gotta do, you have to. The Beyond EDC Cleaver actually looks pretty sick. <laughs> I gotta admit. That's the same folks who did the, um, the River Wolf from Demco. What else do we have here? We got some more of these Bradford knives. Everybody loves the Bradford knives. These look pretty cool. The Sedulo. Sedulo? Sedulo? I don't know. Let's look at one that looks flashy. How about this? What do we got here? S30V. We have Gerber's version of the Axis Lock. Uh, I like the texturing on there. That's almost certainly some type of injection mold plastic. Yeah, FRN, polymer. Um, they're just behind, right? I mean, you look at this and you look at the Hogue Deca and it's like, well, I mean, S30V is great. You know, some people are going to prefer S30V over Magna Cut. <gasps> How could they? Isn't Magna Cut just better without asking any questions about it? Well, no, no. All steels are a balance of different attributes, right? So it depends on what you're going to use it for. S30V is still absolutely a premium steel. It's not a budget steel just because there are new flashy steels available. Um, that being said, um, this is like a Gerber bug out. Except, I don't know. I, I, I just don't, I don't believe that the fit and finish is going to be quite as good. Um, those line steel fixed blades look really nice. That is is a good looking fixed blade. Ooh, nice size too. Yeah, looks pretty good. M4, wow, okay, nice. All right, we got some new Godfathers. Uh, I, think th I think those might have been there for a bit. BRS Evolve, hold on. What, what was that that I just saw at the bottom? What is this? 
Hmm. Kopesh. Kopesh. 9.25 inches. That is a big knife. <laughs> that's kind of neat. Ooh, that's kind of a little bit different there. Hmm. Nine and a quarter, four inch blade, 160 thousandths, M390. The Kopesh from BRS's Evolve. <laughs> that's not typed out correctly. The apostrophe S should be after the Evolve. The Kopesh from BRS Evolve's series is a large, hardworking, well-made folder with fabulous opening action. <laughs> Those interchangeable. <laughs> Sometimes you, you just need a knife, not just something sharp, but a full-size, no-nonsense pocket slicer. And the Kopesh is that, simple and plain. What else is there to say? Uh, you said it all. <laughs> <laughs> I love Blade HQ. I mean, here's the thing. Think about this. They they got to type something up for for you know. I think almost everything. You run out of stuff to say. Take it from somebody who reviews knives, and you, you get a you know. It's like oh look at that another titanium frame lock, right? What are you gonna say? I mean, yeah. It looks look it looks neat. I I like how it looks, and I like BRS for sure. <laughs> what else? What do we got? What do we got? Nah, nah, mm-mm, mm-mm. What's this, QSP? Oh, yes, QSP. What do you got for me here? QSP Otter Flipper Liner, S35VN. Eh, okay. It's real small, six and a half inches. I like this material, um, copper foil carbon fiber. That looks real nice. Ooh, yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah, I wish it was bigger, but that's cool. That's a neat, uh, that's a, QSP always coming in hot with that, with those price tags. Um, and, and by that, I mean, um, that it's a good price tag <laughs> for what I, for what, what you're getting there, right? Pretty cool. Uh, we are back into somewhat, are we in familiar territory? We've got some alternate versions of um, some uh, concept knives. I hope they reach out to me again soon. I always like looking at their stuff. Yeah, because I recognize this. Okay, all right. I think I've seen all of this. Yes, for the most part. Hey, a wooden... Viking sword. I'm still going just a couple more pages just to look. Yeah, I think I've... Oh, no. No, 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 no. We have not talked about this. CJRB, where are you guys at? Hey! CJRB, Artisan Cutlery! Tried to contact you on Instagram. <laughs> they won't respond. <laughs> I want to look at this stuff, and I think people want to see it, right? You don't have to go to my channel to see it, but I'd like it. Uh, I'd like to look at this, right? Um, this looks interesting. It's wild and weird. ARRPM9. Yeah. This is cool. Uh, I'm kind of... Yeah, the Mylea, that's fine. Uh, but this is interesting. I'd like to look at that. Where are you guys at? Uh, let's see. Mm, I think I've seen pretty much all of this. Oh, wow. Surprise, surprise. The dodo is still there. <laughs> oh, it's the serrated dodo. <laughs> you guys don't want the serrated M4 dodo? Gosh, why not? Cool stuff. There's definitely some interesting things coming. I think the second half of 2022 is probably going to be the most exciting. This year, um, well... <laughs> I don't think the Spyderco reveal knives were all that impressive. Were you guys impressed? There's one that weird. It's not on here, but that none of these are all that interesting to me. But the one that was titanium and it had the weird lock on it, I was interested in that. Still waiting for them to re-release the Python. Are you guys going to do that this year? That'd be really cool. This year has been um, a more exciting year for knives than I can remember in, in, in quite a while. Um, so, uh, you know, given that I've, I've had a few hints on some things that are, are still coming for the second half of 2022, I'm just, uh, 
I'm thankful that we can not only all still enjoy this stuff, but that we are starting to wrap, ramp things back up and there's going to be some more exciting stuff for the second half. This is fun. I always like doing these videos. I always appreciate you guys who like to hang out and, you know, watch these kinds of things because it's fun to go through this together. I think that's going to be pretty much it today. I will link these pages, like I said, right down below for your convenience. Everything that we looked at, not individual items, but just the pages individually so that you can go through and check those out. It doesn't take that long. So lots of neat stuff at Blade HQ. As per usual, it does help my channel when you use my links before you buy something, but that's entirely up to you. Uh, thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.